When it comes to niching your business, my next guest has something really unique and you're going to want to hear this. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg, speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, here to help you and your wedding and event business sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Welcome to another special segment on niching your business. And when I thought about this series, I immediately thought about my next guest here, and she's uh, Nil Saltuk in Colorado. Nil, how you doing? I'm great, how are you, Alan? I am doing well, thank you. And you have a very unique business that every time I mention it to someone, and, and, and you've gotten at least one customer that I know of from a friend of mine, a wedding I was going to, um, I mention, I say what it is, and everybody is always like, that's such a really good idea. So what is your business name and what do you do? Yes, uh, the business is called Weather or Not. And what we do is focus on keeping outdoor events covered from Mother Nature. So if you've ever been to an event where, you know, the rain starts to drizzle or the, the temps start to drop and you're wondering, oh, if I just had a blanket or an umbrella, that's what we do. And speaking of which, I was going to a wedding in October here in New Jersey. And about six or seven days before, my friend whose son was getting married, my best friend from college, and he said, you know what, it's going to be cold. And I said, I know somebody. And we always joke that we live in New Jersey, so you have to have a guy. So you're my guy. There, there you go. You're my guy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and I said, you know, I have a client that was, we had just had our consultation, actually, you and I, Neil. And, and this is what she does, blankets, shawls, umbrellas for inclement weather. He goes, oh, what a good idea. Give me her information now. And no joke, as soon as I gave it to him, he reached out to you. You were great. You got it to him. And on the table next to the jars of honey favors were these beautiful green, brand new blankets. And my wife and I had them on our laps because it was 40 degrees in the tent. Even with the heat, it just still wasn't enough. And it was the perfect thing. No, Nobody said, what are their blankets here for? Everybody was like, oh, cool. There's a blanket over here. So how did you come up with this idea? And by the way, whether or not, for those of you listening, if you didn't look at the title, it's spelled W-E-A-T-H-E-R, which is very cute, by the way. So um, it's a great idea, but a lot of people have great ideas and they don't act on it. So where did this spark come from? So I was a wedding planner a bunch of years ago. And uh, I had a good friend who was also a planner. And one day we were just chatting and I said, you know, it would be great if someone had shawls for, and she finished the sentence and said, rent. And I was like, really? And she said, yeah, it's a good idea. And I thought, well, because I'm from Turkey and in, in Turkey, a lot of times when you go to an event outdoors, the caterer would bring blankets or shawls they have them at restaurants uh so you know it makes sense it's a hospitality thing and i just thought why don't we do that here so um and she said well if you're gonna do shawls you have to do umbrellas (laughs) i thought (laughs) well who the heck would rent umbrella oh right okay so (laughs) made sense and that's how we got started so interesting. Uh, I've traveled around the world. I've never had somebody, uh, umbrellas for sure. Like every hotel I go to, they'll give you an umbrella. If it's raining, they'll give you an umbrella as you're going out. I've never seen, of course, I don't know they would give one to me anyway, but a shawl or a blanket at a restaurant. I've, I've spoken in 14 countries. I've been to more than that. So it's interesting. So Turkey, this is just a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. A lot of, well, in Istanbul anyway. And okay. a lot of times, uh, you know, just to keep people cozy. And there are a lot of outdoor dining opportunities there. So um, some restaurants don't even have indoor spaces because their view is so beautiful. Right. Uh, so, yeah. That's very interesting. So that there's the spark there. Okay, so she said rent and you were like, huh, okay, people would do that. And then umbrellas, you have to have umbrellas. So now we have shawls, we have blankets, we have umbrellas. So, okay, there's the idea, but then you need to do it. So <laughs> did you get the stuff and then see who needed it? Or did you see who might want it and then buy the stuff? Oh, good, good question. I had a focus group to start. So okay. uh, because I had the planner community, I think we had about 10 people involved. And I asked them to rate it on a scale of one to 10. And I think it came back around 8.5. So mm-hmm. I got all the pricing opportunities there, like figured out what they thought their clients would pay, what um, the average uh wedding, I started out on the wedding side, um, but the average wedding budget might be 
that would be interested and available to to do something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I felt pretty confident getting started. I didn't buy a lot of inventory um, to begin with. And also we thought, so I, I was working with my friend Lori in sales and she, um, she and I both thought that people would want colors, you know, to match their event color. Okay. So that's how we started with a lot of different color variety. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, so two things there. First of all, you sounded very corporate there for a little bit. We had a focus group and we rated this and all this. So you <laughs> must, you must have a corporate background then. Uh, a little tiny bit, but not in marketing okay. at all. I just, okay. I just, it, I shouldn't have said a focus group even, but just like a ping of people that we knew. Oh, it's a focus group. That's exactly yeah. what it is. It's a, anytime you're asking people, what do they think? It's a focus group. I had somebody call me yesterday um, and he said, I'm thinking about putting this event on in Kansas City in late July, early August. I have this theater. It's a great thing or whatever. What do you think? I said, it's not what I think because I can come, right? It's, is there interest? Are people too busy because they're doing weddings? You know, do they have money yet? Because we didn't have money. And <laughs> now they have, they have, they had time. They didn't have money. Do they have money and not have time? Right. Let, let's see what that is. I said, just ask some people. It's a focus group. You don't have to put them in a room with a camera and a one-way mirror, uh, mirror right, to, to do that. So you buy, you go to buy inventory, and this is a big thing for people because you need you you need the inventory available. People want colors. That's a big statement. People want colors. How did you decide? what colors to buy and how many to buy mm, good question we started out with our first clients i bought just for them so okay. um a couple of the people that we worked with in the beginning were people from the industry that were actually getting married and so i ended up with some dark pumpkin and merlot shawls <laughs> <laughs> and okay. uh some light pink and things like that and then uh over the next couple of years we realized that that wasn't really what people were looking for because mm -hmm. their guests would arrive dressed in a certain attire and then they would look at the red shawl and it wouldn't match so right. we decided to pull back a bit and Lori's background was um, wardrobe styling so that was a huge plus for whether or not because she could bring that that skill and she said how about we shift to neutrals so that's when we shifted a lot of our product to whites and ivories, blacks and char chocolate. So, right. right, which again, that was my thought is like, well, that's not going to go with everybody's. But of course, if you're cold enough, you're going to wear it. But that's not the point. The point is you want them to put it on and feel good when the photographer's walking around, right? <laughs> Taking yeah. pictures and things like that. So now, but the idea of renting uh, versus buying, do more people rent from you or buy? Rent, absolutely. Okay. We don't have as much, I mean, you can buy a shawl anywhere almost, you know, so we don't have as much um, competition in the rental space. Mm -hmm. And also I've, I've heard some really interesting feedback about people wanting to be green and reuse and, mm -hmm. um, and you know, be aware of resources. So. Right. So interesting with my friend, he decided to buy because he's like, I don't want to be bothered with collecting them and sending them back. <laughs> That, yep. <laughs> that, that was it. He's like, this is a great idea. I'm doing it right now. And him as the father of the groom, it wasn't even a matter of like, who's going to pay me? He's like, I'm paying for it. it, it it's it's done. And he's like, I I said, you know, where do we give you? He said, no, 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 take them. They're, they're, everybody take them. And it just became the other favor, right? The the other favor there, which we loved. They were like two two brand new blankets. And yeah. they were they were green, you know, sitting on my lap under the table. Who cared? Who care what mm -hmm. color they were? It doesn't matter. So they were very green, but not in the echo way that you were <laughs> you were saying over there. So um, uh, neutral colors. Okay, what about the umbrellas? Um, mm -hmm. What about colors for the umbrellas? Because that's not necessarily you're trying to match the fashion. You have so many things you could do, including, I, I guess, clear, right? Yep. Yeah, clear, big, popular one. Uh, and then we did stick with neutrals there too. We, we started out adding red and blue and those are more for corporations. Um, a lot of the social events want them to be available for rain or sun, but they want them to kind of blend into the background. They're gorgeous in photos, even if they're yeah. white or cream. Right. So I like that aesthetic, um, but seeing a sea of red umbrellas for let's say a wedding is kind of a little bit, you know, eye popping. <laughs> right. Right. Who was the who was the artist? Wasn't there? Was it Magritte or someone with the? Oh yes. Was it Magritte? So. Okay. We're getting we're getting art geeky now. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, but 
I'm sure you've also done rainbow colors, right? There are probably some people that have, have wanted the rainbow colors on the umbrellas, right? Uh, yeah. So um, what's like, when people are doing neutrals, do they rely on you and say, you know, give me an assortment of neutrals or are they going in generally for one color? One color. Yeah, we thought okay. they might do a palette of like ivories and mm -hmm. then that just, it doesn't work as well as we thought. So yeah, okay. we, we typically do white, is our number one and then okay. a nice like off-white is yeah. our second most popular i was going to say because white could be a little bit stark as well be, being very white but it's going to go with everything <laughs> so, yeah, true. <laughs> so, so there you go so uh there, we were talking um actually you you had another consult with me we were talking about the the pivot a little bit which is another series i have here but with the pandemic it started with the spark of restaurants in Turkey. You had that idea over there. Have Has this gone outside the event space to restaurants as well? A little bit, yes. Okay. I've spoken with some restaurants. I, think, I see the opportunity, especially as people feel less comfortable sitting in the, indoors, mm -hmm. um, giving people the opportunity to still dine at their favorite establishment, but on the balcony or on the patio. Um, and the thing that I've learned from using them myself is that I like to use the blankets on the chair itself to keep myself warm because sometimes the metal chairs are really cold, that type of thing. And a lot of times people will bundle up as a jacket, but they, their legs are still cold. So the right. lap blanket really helps right. out. That would be great for my dad in Florida because he wears shorts. He's 90 years old, gonna be 91 next week. He wears shorts all the time. He will put a jacket on if he's a little chilly. And the only time he wears long pants, he calls them his big boy pants, is, is if he has to. Like they're going to a restaurant and my sister will say, hey, you know, Pop, you have to put on your big boy pants, right? And they'll go there. <laughs> but I could see him, you know, the leg, it can get cool at night sometimes in some places. I could see the, you know, on the chair, that's a great idea, or on the legs over there. So uh, blankets, shawls, umbrellas, inclement weather involves other things. Any other accessories that came along with that? Yeah, so we, we expanded our line by asking event planners what they were looking for and the, the okay. concerns that they had. Mm -hmm. And our, our next product was faux fur blankets. And some planners up in Aspen brought that idea to us and said, could you get these? And so they used them on fire pits, like seating for fire pits, that type of thing, right. lounge areas. Um, we added ponchos because of um, Heather Dwight up in Boulder, Colorado is a wedding planner and she mentioned, you know, it'd be really great if we had ponchos. And, you know, the response from some of the other people I spoke with was like, well, do, we, do people want to get dressed up and wear a poncho? She told me the background to that was that she had a very high-end wedding and the women's gowns were very expensive. So even going to the car, she was worried about, you know, silk being ruined and things like that. So. And I've also had feedback about people getting on a chairlift to go up to the top of a mountain, which is oftentimes where people get married in Colorado, right? And protecting their their attire while they go up. So. Right. So something longer. It's not just keeping me warm now. It's also the protection. And I think you had also told me about like an event that could be fully tented, but there's a gap from the parking lot to get to the the, the event space, right? Or between the event spaces, right? Mm -hmm, so, absolutely. So is there, I guess, somebody's then at the parking lot with the umbrellas or with the whatever, the ponchos? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes the valets will use them too. So as right. they escort people out of the car, they'll hand them an umbrella. Great idea. Great idea. And for the companies, the corporations, are you doing logo stuff as well? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that you typically buy and then we logo embroider uh, silk screen on the umbrellas, whatever they like. So Great. Okay. So that the... the the, the thought that I had the first time we were talking and I still have with people renting is how much of it comes back? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say like 98% of it. So okay. <clears throat> most of it comes back. We, we do, if people are worried about that, we help them. We suggest that they put up a sign next to the items if they're going to have a big collection area. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they might have somebody announce it. Uh, but most of the time they come back. And then I've actually gotten calls from the East Coast from like a double tree hotel because mm -hmm. our items have our, our logo and our phone number on it. Okay. And one gentleman called and said, I have your umbrella here. So can I send it back to you? <laughs> yeah. It's going to cost you more to send it back to me than the umbrella, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> that was like the time I left the charger in an airport and they contacted me because I had, no, it wasn't a charger. It was a splitter 
um, for like a three and three and one splitter because I always carry those. Uh, it's a great travel thing. If the outlets are all being used, you can say, "Hey, can we share?" And you put that in, and I had it had my name and my phone number on it, and they called me. And I was like, "You know, it, it's it's a dollar eighty nine. Just don't don't, <laughs> don't. It, that was if I was still in the airport. Fine, I'll come and get it. But otherwise, no, don't <laughs> don't bother with that. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Uh, what about? Um, do you do those uh, things for the heels so they don't step step in that? I thought that was a great idea as well because I I see all the you know the spiked heels at these events that are out on grass and all of this and you know they're sinking in. <laughs> you uh -huh. just know that's happening. Uh, so yeah. what are what are the what are the other extensions? So we have ponchos, we have those heel things. Is there anything else? Parasols, par paper parasols, and fans. So okay. people who oh, are fans. you know yeah. dealing with the heat. Yeah, we're actually yeah. sending some out this weekend. Um, so it, the other, the other part about what we do is like, we're totally open to new ideas. So I always ask people, um, if you think of anything, bring it to me. I'd love to take a look at it, see if it works for our clients and our, uh, our offerings. So we just stick to personal accessories though. We don't get into heaters and right. tents and all the other stuff. Right. Yeah. So, but again, the, the idea of this, it, I love the spark and you know, if you're listening, ideas don't do anything you have to take action on them the i the fact that you then went out and said let me see what other people think other people think it's a good idea you said you got an 8.5 out of 10 that's a pretty good one over there because uh, there's always somebody that's gonna be like nah that's not a good idea right so <laughs> that's okay <laughs> and, and you know if, if everybody thinks it's a great idea it's like mm, okay that that's good but give me some feedback right give me some Give me some friction here. Show me where I can reduce that friction point. So that, that that's great. And the other thing that we heard is you started with your first customers. You bought for them instead of buying all this inventory. And now what? I had somebody came up to me at a photo booth expo one time and he couldn't afford to consulting with me. He didn't have a website. I don't know how that was his plan. He had bought so much photo booth equipment that he couldn't afford advertising, marketing, consulting or anything. And I said, so what was your plan? <laughs> like, 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 what was your plan to let people know what you do? You, you know, if you build it, they will come. I don't think so. You know, yeah. because he didn't have a website, <laughs> which was <laughs> which was crazy. So uh, you have uh, uh, all the all these things here. What's what's next for you? Oh, uh, just growing the business and uh, really expanding outside of Colorado. We we do ship nationwide now. Mm -hmm. um, but making sure people know we're here because I love hearing, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you guys exist. I can't believe someone does this. I just happened to Google umbrella rental or blanket rental or something. Right. And um, and I wanna be able to, to continue that. And I have a daughter who just really wraps her arms around whether or not, and she, she truly believes in what we're doing. And it's all about hospitality and enabling people to show right. their guests that they care. Great. How old's your daughter? She's twelve. Okay, yeah, so we can't we can put her to work, but not so much <laughs> yet. Uh, okay. She writes um, our thank you cards. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. So uh, you, you're looking to expand, so you're looking for a salesperson. Is that yeah. how you can do that? Right. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, do you do Do you have affiliates as well? Is that something you do? Or we don't currently, but that is something I have entertained. Yes. So because you think about who. Who could tell their customers about this? Venues could tell their customers about it. Caterers could tell their customers about it. Photographers, planners, bands, DJs, officiants, right? Anybody could tell their customers about it. So uh, we will certainly have your contact information in in the show notes. What is the web address? It's weatherornotaccessories.com. And that's W E A T H E R, whether or yes. not access, right? Whether or not access, we will definitely put that in there. So, Neil, thank you so much for joining me and for sharing your story here. Um, it's so the website's the best way for people to get a hold of you. Sure. Yeah. That's pretty okay. Good. We'll put the contact information in there as thank well. The, again, when I thought about niching, uh, I'm like, this is a great niche because every time I mention it, somebody goes, huh? That's a great idea. <laughs> so there you go. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Full transcripts of this and every episode are available on my website at alanberg.com. 
And if you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of the episodes, or you'd like to make a suggestion for a future topic or a guest for one of my dialogue episodes, you can email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, post a review if your platform allows it, and if you don't get email updates of the latest episodes, as well as upcoming workshops and masterclasses that I have, you can join at connectwithallenberg.com. I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. Thanks.